It's the last game of the She Believes Cup from Orlando, Florida. It's the USA versus Argentina. A winner draw will give the U.S. another trophy. With Ali Wagner, I'm J.P. Della Camera. Ali, what are your expectations for this one? Look, I think this is U.S.'s game to control from that first whistle into the final whistle. My anticipation is that Argentina's going to come out and sit in a low block and ask the questions of the United States whether or not they can find space to operate. We saw in that first match against Canada, they had difficulty breaking them down, difficulty with that final piece, that final execution, and we'll see if they've grown within this tournament. Here are the starting 11s for these two sides. And if Argentina lost their top player to an ACL in that last match, the other bright spot for them has been Rodriguez, Yamela Rodriguez. Going to keep some eyes on her, but the other players, the young 20-year-old Falfon, who's going to step into that defensive holding mid role for Benitez and see what she can do tonight against the U.S. And for the U.S., the three names that jump out at me on that team sheet, Tiana Davidson, Casey Kruger, and then Christy Mewis in midfield. In particular, Tiana Davidson, because this is the first time she's lined up as a center back partner with Becky Sauerbrunn under Vlako Andonovsky. Time now for Match Day All. Access sponsored by Volkswagen, the presenting partner of U.S. Soccer. We caught up with U.S. head coach Vlatko Andonovsky and asked him about the changes in the lineup. Uh, we want to rest some legs. Uh, we saw what we needed to see from uh, some of the players, and uh, some of them actually put uh, good good shifts in uh, lots of minutes. Uh, so we have players like uh, Crystal Dunn and uh, Abby Dolkemper, Lindsay Coran, that uh, will uh, take a little bit of rest in this game. But uh, there are other players uh, that uh, that we want to want to see and evaluate, and this is a great opportunity for that. Talking about Tierna Davidson in the starting lineup today. And for Tierna, it's the tenth time that she's been paired with Becky Sauerbrunn in the center of that defense. They started together the last time in the very last game of Jill Ellis back in October of 2019 versus South Korea. Ready for the kickoff. It is Argentina on the ball. They're in white. USA in blue with seven changes in their starting 11 from the game on Sunday versus Brazil. Brazil won their game earlier today, 2-0 versus Canada. So right now, they are on top with that extra game being played. A draw or a win, and the USA are champions again. On this right side, it's Delgado. Uber, number eight for Argentina, started all three games. start in place of a listener who had 10 consecutive shutouts red hot end goal good opportunity tonight Allie for Jane Campbell it is a good opportunity and she was well off her line there to read that service in behind well found the young 20 year old the one supplying that to Rodriguez on the left side Rodriguez will get a little bit higher if Argentina can maintain possession and get out of their own end Argentina on that ball they Overhit that intended for Hymas. Sauerbrunn switching over to right center back where Abby Dalkamper normally plays. Here's Rodriguez, and Lavelle came back to win it for O'Hara. Kelly's first appearance in the She Believes Cup missed the first two games with a minor injury. Deemed okay to play tonight. Christy Mewis, another player to watch tonight. Same with Kruger getting an opportunity in the second round. Lloyd left. Press makes a run in the box. Will not open as well, but the ball could not be cut back to Rose. In a little different start than I expected from Argentina, their initial line of confrontation higher up on the field, which means everyone else is a bit more stretched in behind them. And the U.S. is going to like that. I think they came into this match. Blanco told us he was expecting them to sit in a real low block in a 4-2-3-1. And early signs suggest that perhaps they're going to be a little more aggressive in their defending, a little more aggressive in their attack. Press with it. That's the way they were against Brazil, not against Canada, though. That game was 0-0 after 90 minutes, and then they gave up a goal to Canada. Two minutes in a stoppage time. 
Yeah, you're exactly right. Against Brazil, they were more aggressive. Against Canada, they sat in deeper blocks. Liddell laid it back for Kelly O'Hara. Sauerbrunn. Davidson. In his second start this year, only played one game last year due to ankle problems. Liddell, good job to keep it in, but can't get to it. Nunez, Rodriguez, under pressure, and Liddell touched it last. That is Argentina's head coach, Carlos Barrello. Coached this team in three different World Cups spanning a large number of years. There was a huge gap from 2007 to 2019 when they qualified again. U.S. throw in for O'Hara. Kelly gets it back. She'll be playing this summer for the Washington Spirit of the NWSL. Kruger from the Chicago Red Stars. Davidson, her teammate there, for Sauerbrunn. Up the middle. The foot from Roy to press, and it's cut up by Cometti. She clears it away. Kruger back on it. Casey was a sub against Canada, played nine minutes. It's her first start in 2021. Sauerbrunn outside the circle. LaBelle. That was blocked, and here's Jaimes. Big forward, knocked away by LaBelle. Clipped ahead. Too far away from Rodriguez. And it will roll out for Argentina. Throw in. Latko Andonovsky's team trying to be the first team in She Believes Cup history to have three consecutive shutouts in a single tournament. It's a good stat, JP. Yeah. Let's see if they can get that done. They've had two wins by pretty close scores, actually. That was a 1-0 game over Canada. And Ali, it was really 1-0 until the late goal by Rapino. Yeah, that and a silly win. you're right, a silly mistake by Canada as well to give away the set piece that the U.S. ultimately scored on. And you can see the high boot by O'Hara, catches Rodriguez. Dangerous play. Argentina having to go without arguably their best player in Lorena Benitez tore her right ACL in the game Sunday against Canada. And she was having such a good tournament. Miss her tonight. Argentina back of the ball. Comenti started all three games. Several players on this squad have started all three games. They didn't come here with a deep team. Had 22, not 23 players at the start. Four players had some COVID issues, so they were really short-handed in terms of depth, especially in that first game. Press will send it back. Press with a goal in the last game. Looking very much in form on that attack for the U.S. Julie Ertz. Ten straight full 90s for Ertz, a workhorse. Kruger. Davidson. Sauerbrunn. Halfway line gain for the U.S. Seventh minute. The U.S. and Argentina zeroes to the board. O'Hara, the cross off the chest of Lloyd. First touch not as clean as she wanted, and the flag was up anyway. And it's good play on the right side for the U.S. You're already seeing the interchange between Rose Lavelle, Kristen Press, and in this case, Kelly O'Hara getting to more advanced position. And Carly Lloyd just sitting between the two center backs. Takes that one down off her chest, but as you said, an offside position. That's one of the reasons I think Lloyd is in this match is to see if she can be get on the end of service against Argentina. The U.S. can pin in Argentina. Likely you're going to see a lot of wide play. 
And handled either cleanly. Ertz will bring this down for Kruger. Taken away by Falfan. She'll get it back. Nunez will go back. The 21 year old goalkeeper, Pereira. Gave it right back to the U.S. A recipe for disaster. It goes in for Lloyd, but now the flag's up again as Pereira was debating whether to come out for that or not. And here's a look at the quick play, the quick throw in from the United States. Carly Lloyd checks over, good back to goal play. She brings that ball down. Rose Lovell gets around the outside. And then the cutback ball right at the edge of the six. Newest can't get there for the Argentinian defender, but that's where space is going to be for the United States. If they can get around the edge, is that cutback ball. And with those late runs coming out of mid, Argentina likes to get more man-centric, follow players around the pitch, and the U.S. can start to manipulate them and get those second runs coming from late positions. Kruger comes back for it. Formerly Casey Short. She got married last December. Her husband is an emergency room physician in Chicago, a frontline worker. Here's Lavelle. Side, Rapino. Christy Nielis. Nice ball ahead. Rapino kept it low. That's blocked. Falfan with the clearance up towards Hymas. She's pretty much on her own up there. Sauerberg first to get it. Back to Jane Campbell. Ertz, quick turn. Looks for that immediate long ball, but too far for press. And the execution wasn't there, but there is space in behind this Argentinian back line. Seeing Kristen Press come into those interior channels more than staying wide. Pereira went long and Tedefo Hymas. Davidson's header, then Mewis. Argentina will win it back. Cometti goes back to goal. Somewhat risky, not a good ball back, and that was even riskier. Little game of here, kitty kitty. Yeah. Oh. Out. Aggressive challenge by Lavelle. In the 11th minute. Well, this right side is where the U.S. tries to filter play so they can win it and break. And you see the heavy challenge come in from Rose Lavelle. Cometti was a player down. She wore the captain's armband previously, but tonight it is Santana wearing it. Hurts and Hymas. That goes against Argentina. Kruger will push back for Davidson. By this time, the last game, Kristen Press already had the U.S. on the board. Davidson. Back for Sauerbrunn. Guerrero. Back to the captain. Up for Lavelle. That clearance. Kruger kept it alive. Looks for Rapino. Megan will send it back. Ertz had a stretch for that. Ertz, long one there. Wanted Mewis on the run. Cleared out by Delgado. First one on 
Kevin. States has been able to do a one-two, a quick one-two around Delgado, the right back. You can see no recovery effort from her at all. And then Ertz tries to play that little cutback ball. You've got two options in Rose Lavelle, Christy Mewis. It's not the right connection from Ertz initially. And then Lavelle has two bites at it. Again, poor finishing, poor final execution from the United States. That's the final piece that Blatko and Danofsky said Ali was missing. A lot of these players are in, I guess, preseason form, early preseason form with NWSL. So that's the part that's going to come last. It hasn't been good in this tournament. No, it hasn't. And that's just typical. I mean, as far back as I can recall, we've always talked with the United States about how we always create so many chances that we're almost a little too relaxed when we do get those chances. And it's been the case in this tournament. He did say their patience was better on Sunday and their problem solving was better, but the finishing was not. And I think you could say the same thing again already tonight. I mean, they've already created some good chances. They are manipulating the defense of Argentina, and I think they are reading that that space is actually on him behind when maybe that was not the anticipation coming into the match. And one of the things you can see out of the United States is they're working on that counter movement. Can you get a Lloyd checking off the back line and then a press running in behind? Can you drag him out of the space that ultimately you try to get into? And they're trying to do that with their fullbacks, with Kelly O'Hara, with Casey Krug on the far side, you know, pull up that outside mid. So now Rose Lavelle has a bigger pocket of space to operate in. Rapino. Ertz. That's blocked. through to press. She wanted O'Hara, the pass wasn't there. Rodriguez blocked, and there's a collision there with Rodriguez and Press. In the middle, Rodriguez stays down. Up it comes for Pino, and it's by the shot, and a goal for the U.S. They take the lead. top score in she believes cup history with her sixth and Argentina just gets caught in their transition from attack to defense and the United States capitalizes it on this case it's Kristen Press working back ultimately helping Lavelle win that ball and then Lavelle gets her head up Rapino snuck to the inside and even though that ball checks up Argentina is still not close enough to make a play on it and Rapino can calmly let that roll right in front of her path and then does so well on that finish. Cut it back against the momentum of the goalkeeper, Pereira. So the U.S. is on top on the Rapino goal. And now it's 66 straight matches with at least a goal. And during that time, they've been averaging really three goals a game. So the offense has been terrific during that stretch of games. Well, let's see what that goal does to this game. Clipped long. Lloyd heads it down. Christy Mewis. Flag was up. It's the goal in the 16th minute for Megan Rapino. It's only the second goal scored by the U.S. in the first half of this tournament. And they will bring this back. Vlatko Andonovsky, a perfect 15-0-0. Keeps adding to that record. Best start for U.S. coach. Rapino with his cross. Nobody at that post. Getting there is O'Hara. Looking to turn it. Did such a good job to get that ball in off her left foot. Yeah, and to rinse off the defenders of Argentina, that ball curling into the path, and this is a look at Rapino's strike on net. 
neither center back in position to make a play and again just a good finish I think Rapino or Lloyd could have taken that ball initially both in the same vicinity back to live action with clearance by Santana Davidson putting it ahead on the turn there it's Menendez Kill. Too fancy there. The ball is given away. 14 players from this Argentina team were at the World Cup in France in 2019. So they have some experience there as this is ruled a goal kick. Missing a few key players is Duffy and Nini, one of them. Yeah, they've had some problems, Allie. You know, to see them be competitive makes you wonder how good they can be if they had the proper funding and the proper management. They didn't play for 15 months, and they came out, gave Brazil a game, gave Canada a game, and have started off decent here against the U.S. Absolutely correct. And my understanding is that they're hoping to be full-time professionals within five years, but right now they're still a semi-professional league in Argentina. And a few of the big teams, Boca Juniors, River Plate, they will fund all the salaries of their players, but they're the anomaly. That's yeah. not the standard, and that has to start shifting. Boca Juniors were the champs this year. 7-0 in the final over River Plate. Seven players from that Boca team were with Argentina here at the She Believes Cup. None from River Plate, interestingly enough. The other big squad. U.S. up on a goal by Megan Rapino. Came in the 16th minute. This is Argentina's history. Group stage is a bit misleading because in 2019, they were pretty good. They only drew with mighty Japan 0-0. That was a good game. They lost 1-0 to a better England side and then trailed Scotland 3-0 and came back and drew them with three goals in 16 minutes. So they surprised a lot of people in France in 2019. They were incredibly organized and we saw that actually against Canada in this second match of the She Believes. I think today they're, they are playing a little differently than, than we expected being more brave and interestingly enough they utilized both same outside backs that they utilized against Brazil up field they come with Rodriguez Hymas plays for a club team in China comes all the way back to Jane Campbell on that lob distribution she will find Rapino Ertz Join us late. You're wondering about all of these changes. There are no injuries for the U.S. Katarina McCoyer did go back to Lyon, where she'll be playing in the Champions League game coming up. Had to adhere to quarantine rules, but the changes made tonight are not because of injury. So, in particular, Jane Campbell getting the start tonight. Alyssa Nair getting a well-earned breather as the U.S. tries to sort out who will be the backup goalkeeper come the Olympics. With a challenge coming in from behind by number 15 Menendez on Casey. I want to say Casey Short, but now it's Casey Kruger. 22nd minute, U.S. up by a goal. Rapino on the ball. It was a sub the other night when she scored. Start of the other games. by Pereira. Hurts. Kristen press wide. That one hit. I thought off an Argentina player. It did. Another U.S. throw in from O'Hara. Sour run. For Davidson. Sour run kept it low. Blocked. It falls to Lavelle. Pushing it. Ten from U.S. Tackled away. It's a good play there by Delgado. Megan Rapino cutting it inside. Wanted the return, but that one didn't work. Lavelle gets it back for Rapino. Tap back. 
for Davidson. Davidson out of Stanford University was an NWSL overall number one pick of Chicago. O'Hara lost it there. Nunez pass. And the U.S. will end up with the ball again on this throw in. Rose LaBelle by the corner flag. The cross off her right foot. It'll bounce. Christy Nunez couldn't settle it. Chase back to Sauerbrunn. Hurts. Tina Davidson will go opposite for Casey Kruger. And you can just see now as Argentina sits in lower, they have no intention on putting any pressure on the center backs and how they dictate play. The wingers worry about those fullbacks. Goes against Santana. Kruger lifting one up. Press. Back post. And Christy Mewis was there. And this is such a good ball by Casey Kruger. Just a quick set play by the United States. No pressure at all. No one stepping to her. Casey Kruger picks out her pass, and if you're Kristen Press, you've got to go with your head. You attack that ball, you drive it down near post or far post, but I think the worst option is to cut your angle down and go with your foot there. Ten goals for her in her last 13 games. She's been involved in 27 goals in the last 29. 12 of those are goals, 15 assists. Davidson. And that's going to go out of play. U.S. with a one-goal lead on the goal by Megan Rapino, her 56th international goal. She becomes the all-time leading goal scorer in She Believes Cup history with six. Throw in Delgado. Lavelle will collect. Sauerbrunn as O'Hara peels off right. It'll go left instead for Davidson. in that final ball and Megan Rapinoe just betting on her teammates she's going to provide that service and the U.S. get up 2 nothing. what a goal that was unselfish Lloyd could have taken that shot and doing the work to get in her inside her defender Megan Rapinoe Lloyd getting close to 300 caps to become only the third player to do that and the yellow card was just issued first booking of this match to Nunez Match referee is Marianela Araya Cruz. She is from Costa Rica. For Carly Lloyd, that's seven assists now in her last ten games. And that was the challenge, the foul, and the yellow on Nunez. Here's a look at Lloyd just attacking the goal, drawing out the goalkeeper, Pereira. And then a nice slip pass. Easy finish in the end for Rapino. 17 plus years for Carly Lloyd in a USA uniform, as we mentioned, getting closer to those 300 caps. And she'll probably get that come April when they play 
expected to play again. Here's Rapino. Lloyd makes the run. Off the right foot and then the post. That was unlucky there for Carly. Didn't get the feet where she wanted them to. And Rapino almost repaying the favor to Lloyd. Good win by Casey Kruger. She steps up. And then the seam that Rapino's in. Wide open. Brilliant ball behind the back line. Great bend on it, shaping it into the path of Carly Lloyd. And as you said, JP, that one just under her. You can't sort out her feet. Yeah, looked like she almost lost her footing just a touch there. As Rapino goes with a short corner. Lloyd and Rapino very active here. It goes into the box. Now outside for Christy Mewis. O'Hara in there. Press! And that's unusual for her. She's been money lately. Not that time. And another good service from Kelly O'Hara. The ball back draws out Argentina. A few players actually look like are offside, but Press wasn't and sneaks in. Can't finish it, though. Barreta put it back into play. 30th minute, U.S. up by two, only needing a draw to win another trophy. Rupino, run it pass, line blocked. First one on it, O'Hara. Tackled away by Yamilo Rodriguez. It's a U.S. corner. <laughs> 32-year-old Kristen Press will take this one from the far side of the stadium. but not yet. Santana's being spoken to. Now Press is ready. She'll drive it towards the middle. Skips by a couple in blue. Kruger's shot blocked off Uber. Then the clearance by Sash. Davidson. Christy Mewis, that's blocked. Older sister of Sam Mewis, recovering from injury back in England, where she plays for Manchester City. Mewis winning it back, Lavelle. Rapino, press, open, shot, saved by Pereira, it's loose. And then press somehow got to a rebound of that, put it open. And it's the counter-press of the United States that is so suffocating, they win the ball back. And then Press sitting a little bit deeper than Rapino with that ball coming back at her. Good reaction saved by Pereira. O'Hara is coming out. Emily Sutter is coming in. We expected this. We were told yesterday that Kelly O'Hara would probably just get 30 minutes. And I don't know what the injury was specifically, Allie, but Kelly O'Hara was flying tonight. Yeah, she was getting up in that right side attack and doing all the things that tactically I believe this squad wanted from her knowing when to pull out pull the opposition a little bit away from their own net to create the space underneath for players to go at them but she had a couple good services so this was a planned sub before nothing she did in this game was a reason for taking her out here's LaBelle's cross in just missing into the box intended for Lloyd and that's blocked, and the foul anyway. Meanwhile, Emily Sonnet will just be a like-for-like -like swap with O'Hara. This is the ball that Rose Lavelle picks the pocket of. Off Argentina and then drives, end line. The cutback coming, and you see actually that regain shape that the U.S. has, the countermeasures they have in place for when they don't keep possession. It allows them to win the ball high up on the pitch in that counter press earlier and more often. U.S. with a two-goal lead, both of those goals by Megan Rapino. Rapino. 
Vino on it. We'll push it back. Davidson. Back for Tierna. Argentina getting it back. Mendez lost it. Sonnet played her 50th international game Sunday versus Brazil. Lavelle also got to game number 50 for the U.S. in that same game. Sour run. Going long. Press again. Kristen on the cut. There's another move. Another. Took a tug there from Nunez, who's already in the yellow. So that was a bit risky for her as it's knocked out. U.S. while they throw in from Sonnet. In the press, drives it across, just missed Lloyd. They're driving balls into the box on a regular basis. Ertz. Sour run. Back for Julie Ertz. Lupino's flick, Christy Mewis in the box, playing it. are coming. And what's so pretty about this goal by the United States is the timing of it all. You've seen they're utilizing the little pocket of space underneath the back line and behind the mids. In this case, it's Christy Mewis just sitting there patiently. You get the checkoff run of Rapina wide and the first time ball in behind for Christy Mewis wide open. And now she's got an ability to get her head up. I love this look at it. Actually splits between the legs of Delgado. And then Christy Mewis picks out a pass with Carly Lloyd sneaking in front of her defender in the center of the box. Those rotations are so key to the way the United States plays under Block It's very much intent on utilizing the rotations of their attacking mid, your wing play, and your fullback in those wide channels. And tonight they're just having their way with Argentina. Argentina. Carly Lloyd's 124th international goal, her 11th goal in her last 19 games played. Sonnet on the ball. The assist going to Christy Mewis, who is making her first start for the USA since March of 2014. This is someone that was on the U.S. squad, then off the radar for so long, did well in the NWSL, got a recall of the team, and has looked good. In fact, has played now in five consecutive games. Hurts for Sonnet. The U.S. in total control here now. They figured out the finishing part today. Three to nothing is your score. 37th minute. That's the first time we've seen Vlad Grandinovsky calmly sitting. <laughs> He's had a lot to stand up for. The three goals, all good ones from his team. Press. Sour run. The flick ahead. Sonnet's on the run against Nunez. Sonnet getting free. Low cross in. Lloyd on the turn. Lost it is Christy Mewis. Stopped by Pereira. Rodriguez. You don't want to be caught dribbling there. U.S. takes it away. Lloyd near the corner flag. Pushing it back for Sonnet. It's right, it's right, it's right. Sauerbrunn. Davidson. Now Sauerbrunn will advance with that pass. Cut off by Delgado. And then she lost it out. Pino got the throw in quick. They just want to keep everything going on the front foot, the U.S. Three goals in the first half matches what the U.S. scored in the first two games. 
Total. Cut the head. Locked and almost given right back to Lloyd. Yamila Rodriguez with that pass ahead. Jaimes. Rodriguez. Cut off. Davidson goes back to Jane Campbell. It's a really good ball out of the back by Tierna Davidson on her favorite left foot. And you get that diagonal. Kristen Press holding the width and a really good first touch because it actually takes her by Nunez and eliminates her recovery effort. A little selfish at the end by Press. Has Rapino in the box. Difficult angle from there. When this term is over, Press heads back to Manchester United. Finish out her first season over in England. Pereira making her eighth international appearance will send this long. Fafan picks it up. Menendez can't find it. Wide for Sonnet. The touch for Lavelle. Off that cultured left foot. Almost found its way to Christy Mewis. Off Kruger. Santana gave it back to Lavelle. Repeat off the middle this time. That clip will draw a free kick. And it's no disrespect to Argentina because, as you know, they haven't played together for over a year and before they came into this tournament. But games like this can give the United States bad habits. Just that last ball by Rose Lavelle, ill advised. Goes out. She avoided the challenge from Prometti. In March, the U.S. men will take part in CONCACAF's Olympic Qualifying Championship. Two tickets to Japan are up for grabs in a tournament you can catch right here on Fox Sports. Coming up at halftime, a pre-recorded conversation with the head coach of that team, Jason Price. The U.S. has not qualified for the Olympics since 2008. They've missed the last two. So this is a big qualifying tournament coming up. Press, crossing, Rapino. Trying to tap it back for Christy Mewis. Missed on that connection. Kruger steps up, winning it. Mewis, nice touch. Mewis, go! For another U.S. a case for being on that Olympic roster. I think Casey Kruger and Kristen Mewis are, are having themselves a night. Good pick off by Kruger and a simple pass. Kristen Mewis gets on the turn and finishes it. And this was the previous play. Or excuse me, the same play that Casey Kruger picked off the pass for. Spun her defender and that's a really difficult finish. Tough angle for her. Does the work back and then opens up. Knows pressure's gonna arrive late. And gets that touch past her. An offensive explosion in this opening half. And for Christy Mewis, it's her fourth international goal. Sauerbrunn moving it ahead. Ertz. Slowed down by Falfon. Press on it. Sonnet. it. Here's Kristen Press sending it back for Davidson. Pino was open, but they missed on that connection. The Delgado pass blocked. Jaimes. Delgado. Santana. All the way across to Nunez. Argentina could use some possession here. All they've been doing is defending the last... 25 or so minutes. 
Rometty drives it all the way across. It's well done. Now Davidson will knock it away. But that's the best stretch of possession Argentina's had. Maybe a good six or seven passes they strung together. Positive passes for the most part. Yeah, I think they started the match with a, with a good string as well. But you're exactly right. It's the first meaningful spell we've seen. Cometi. Another long ball. Wanted Rodriguez. Sonnet had her covered. Press on it, 44th minute. And that is the area, the left side of Argentina, that if they are going to find some joy in this match, I think it would come from with Rodriguez and Jaimez floating over. Tierna Davidson, the closing minutes of this opening half. It's headed away to Nunez. Rodriguez trying to pull it back. Lavelle gets it after Sonnet helped. Rose off the left foot, slightly behind Rapino as Mewis makes a run. Megan will keep it low for Lloyd. Holly went down with Cometti there. In the 45th minute. And if you recall in that opening match against Brazil, it was Cometti who gave away the penalty to Brazil against Adriana to get them on the score sheet for the first goal. And not a lot in that. No. Almost at 45 as Pereira sends another long ball near the halfway line. I just got the first header to it. The U.S. will collect it and no stoppage time. That is the way the first half is going to come to an end. But it's been the best finishing for the U.S. in quite some time. Two goals by Megan Rapino, one by Carly Lloyd, one by Christy Mewis. It is all USA for nothing versus Argentina. From Orlando, Florida, it's the She Believes Cup. It's the final game. U.S. is up over Argentina by the score of 4 to nothing. Here are the highlights, and we start way back in the 16th minute, Alec. Yeah, and it was all USA from the get-go. Brilliant ball in behind by Lavelle. It checks up just a little bit and lands right in the path of Rapina, who's cutting in from an out-to-in run, and then slides that one back across the momentum of Pereira. 26th minute, Kelly O'Hara draws out that winger. Creates a pocket of space underneath. Kristen Press to get into. Brilliant first touch to beat her defender and then slipping Carly Lloyd. Carly Lloyd does the unselfish thing. Slots that one across from Megan Rapino and it's really a tap in. And Tierna Davidson really good on the ball, playing out of the back. Cutting pass, finds Megan Rapino and it's really cheeky by Pino. Just a first time touch between the legs of Delgado and then Christy Mewis slides that one across for Carly Lloyd who gets in front of defender and the U.S. is sitting up 3-0 and in full control of this game. Casey Kruger had a really good first half. You saw a glimpse of it there stepping in front of a defender, winning that ball, finding Christy Mewis. Excellent turn, excellent finish by her in the end. 4-0, all U.S. in that first half. A job well done. And some players are going to be swapped out. We'll give you the subs. It is... Lindsey Horan in, Alex Morgan in, Midge Purse in, out is Casey Kruger, Carly Lloyd, and Rose Lavelle. And, and speaking with Vladko Andonovsky yesterday, these changes are not a surprise. That is what they had said they would do if all things went the way they thought. And we just saw Stabile coming in for Argentina, so we'll have to get you their subs when we get those confirmed. So if you're Argentina, you're losing 4-0. Now you see Lindsey Horan and Alex Morgan <laughs> come in. Fresh legs, fresh ideas, and all that talent. Second half underway. Again, we will get you the Argentina subs when we've got those confirmed. It's Argentina on the ball. It's a phrase we didn't use too much in the first half as the U.S. dominated. 
to Rapino throw in. So Alex Morgan making her second appearance in this tournament, playing in the stadium that she calls home. It's a home for the Orlando Pride of the NWSL. Took one in, whistle before Morgan shot that one. Just announcing the subs now. There was a foul called. There's a free kick coming up. So, Stabile came in. Nunez came out. Nunez was already in a yellow and made a couple of risky challenges after that. So, it's probably wise to make that change. It's Rapino or Haran from outside the box. Rapino with two goals on the night. This is 22 yards away. Rapino curling ball up. And it was too high. Beat the wall, but that ball didn't come down in time. Yeah, it didn't sit for it at all. Prairie had it covered more than likely if it did dip below that bar. Megan Rapino now leading this team with five goals in total in 2021. He's got two tonight. Here's Morgan slotting it for Rapino. Got a tug from Delgado. That was enough to take her off. Stepping in. Hurst, good job, and then gave it away in the end to Uber. And now Argentina with Santana collecting for Jaimes. Argentina just making that one change, the U.S. making three after making one earlier. So they made four out of a possible six changes. Ball sent across. Haran will get it. Gave Haran a bit of a breather here tonight by not starting her. Giving her a bit of a rest. Same with Dahl Kemper and others. Ball played left to Sonnet. That cross. Headed. Right at goal. Flag was up anyway. Now you talked about the U.S. not wanting to get into bad habits. What do you want to see from this team in the second half? I think dictating tempo and knowing when to go, when to sit on it. We talked about throw-ins after that first Canada match and both on the offensive and defensive side of things. Can those be clean? Can they make sure they make the right decisions when they're playing that ball in? Because those are often transition moments in a game. As bizarre as that sounds, that is the reality. And, and I think the right decisions, the right touches, don't get sloppy because you can beat a player. Don't get sloppy because you think you can get a shot off at a difficult angle. You know, make the right decision so you have a tap-in at the end. Here's Rapino, and she would have been wide open, but the flag was up. Two goals on the night for Rapino. They were about 10 minutes apart. Well, so far, it's been the best night for Blatko Andonofsky in terms of his team's execution in the attacking third. And they've they missed some chances, too, but tough to criticize when you get four goals and a half. No, you can't. And they're playing against the opponent that's out there. Yeah. Davidson getting a good look at center back. For Ertz. Give it away. Davidson collecting it. Got good positioning against Hymas. Back for Campbell. Sauerbrunn. Hurts. Well, she had a lot of time. Sent this one long. And I actually think there is more space out there than the team anticipated coming into the match. And I don't believe that that's something that benefits the U.S. team. I think Glocka wanted to see them more challenged in terms of, of a, a very condensed defense that Argentina would throw out. Miller 
Rodriguez draws a foul. They want the competition to be strong, tough to play against. That's why that game against Canada was huge. Even though it was only a one nothing win, and you might say they won ugly, they did win that game. Right. I mean, you can't manufacture things out of the opponent that just aren't there. And for the U.S., they are often not challenged enough. And that is that is one of the challenges of, of being you know, far superior to a, a lot of the other countries. And the challenge is the challenges on these other countries, these other federations, the FAA to step up and support their women's teams. Menendez is coming out. Mariana Laroquette, who has the only goal for Argentina in this tournament, will come in. She'll play for the new Kansas City team in the NWSL. We look forward to watching her play there. And we're going to see another change as well. Uber will get the rest of the night off. Miriam Mayorga will replace her. Third Argentina sub. I'm curious with Mayorga coming in if she drops into a lower role and perhaps her phone bumps up a little higher to where Uber was. All played in wide. Campbell watches as Sada does too, and it's a goal kick for the U.S. 52nd minute, the U.S. dominating. 4 0. Two goals by Rapino, one by Lloyd, one by Christy Mewis. All in the first half. After this, the U.S. has March off. Their players go back to their respective club teams, both here and abroad. And then probably a couple of friendlies in the month of April. Still to be determined. Here's Horan. That pass block. Lindsay cutting it. She and Crystal Dunn recently got new contract extensions from the Portland Thorns, who have been an amazing story in the NWSL. They've got to look forward to crowds coming back to games because they were selling them out many nights. Same with the Portland Timbers, their men's team. Best environment in the women's game. Yeah. Famous. We are starting to see some states lifting some of the restrictions. Limited capacity. There's limited capacity tonight, up to 4,000. It's nice to see some fans able to come to games. We all look forward to when we all can get back to normal. Sonnet. Back for Davidson. She was going to go back to Camel, but will turn on her own and find Sauerbrunn. Mitch Purse started that first game, played some 81 minutes versus Canada is the right back. Horan. Sauerbrunn. Like JP looks like they're going into a 4-1, 4-1 from Argentina. In that line of competition at mid. Purse head up. The cross was deflected out. It's a U.S. corner. Fifth minute, all U.S. up by four. They've beaten Argentina three times in three meetings, winning each game by seven goals. Press will take it. Third U.S. corner. Puts one up for grabs. Horan couldn't get it. It falls for Sonnet. That's blocked. Off Delgado. Sonnet, first one, back to recover. Washington Spirit back will cross it. Off the chest, and then the clearance. Headed down towards Midge Purse. Rodriguez forcing her. Nice turn by Midge Purse. It was well done, and then that's blocked out. Throw in U.S. Sauerbrunn for Davidson. It was intended for Sonnet. Argentina with that pick. That was dangerous. 
Argentina will recover. La Roquette. Under pressure, Delgado. Sash. Into the middle, Delphon. Brought down, Amasana. Davidson for the U.S. Julie Ertz. Davidson. Sauerbrunn. All the U.S. needed tonight was a draw, and they would win the She Believes Cup after Brazil had won the first game over Canada 2-0. They've done much better than that. Four-goal explosion in the first half. Has them almost lifting that trophy as we speak. Delgado. Tenefala Roquette. Sana did a good job there. Winning it and keeping it in play. That was even better. Sana from Rapino. On the right foot. Launches that one. Towards press. It comes back the other way. Sash. Rapino. Trying to turn. Comes all the way back. Outside the circle. Sauerbrunn advancing. Horan. Purse. Julie Ertz will find Emily Sonnet. Sonnet playing as the left back after replacing O'Hara as the right back, but with Sonnet moving to the left because of Purse playing right. And that's the versatility that Vlokanovsky said he wanted to see, and that's her serving the ball in, and questionable, is that a handball? Arms outside the body, the frame of the body. And it does look like it ricochets off that elbow. That was nothing a tough angle. Yeah. yeah look, looking live, I thought it was off the chest, but there is no video review. Not in this tournament. Here is Purse. Horan. And she had an opening for Morgan. Purse will get it. Looks up for Morgan. Too far. Almost had Rapino, though, who was doubled up. And one thing we've seen a lot of in this game, and the pressure for the United States is always strong. We know in their counter press, but you're seeing the defenders, whether it's Sonnet on this side, Purse on the other, Becky Sauerbrunn in that center back position, they're stepping in front of the player and winning the ball before she's able to get it. And that was something that Sauerbrunn told us before the Columbia matches they're working on. If they can read that pressure, if they can step in front of their player and win the ball so they negate them all together. It's been done well tonight. Diana Falfan is coming out, replaced by an even younger player. Falfan is 20. This player is 18. Dalila Ippolito was Argentina's youngest player at the World Cup at the age of 17. She plays for the club side, Juventus. Argentina with it, pushing it left. The more players Argentina can get to play, in other countries, especially where they take it a bit more serious, the better their national team program will become. Morgan slips it through. Right side pass. Rapino is trying to make the run. Cut off there. Stabile. Press stays with her. U.S. with that killer instinct. They're up 4 nothing, but they don't give up on any ball. They're trying to win it back and get a fifth goal. Good hard work by Press initially. <laughs> yeah, and it's Purse who steps in, and now you're seeing the quick one-two again. When you have teams that are so man-centric, the one-two works incredibly well because you can play that ball release and spin, and they're just going to be a step behind. I think that's one of the things U.S. has done well tonight. Cleared by Pereira. Kept cutting it back. Pressure there. The U.S. collectively trying to win this ball. And they do. 
for the moment. Now Horan gets it. Short ball to press. Immediate look. And Herrera almost misplayed it. If she bobbles it there, she's in a lot of trouble. Net was empty behind her. Past the hour mark. It's a 4 0 U.S. lead. And that ball was out. Well, first took a throw in, but they are going to let play continue. It was almost the second ball there on the field. The U.S. on it. Mitch Purse, who plays for Sky Blue of the NWSL, finds Sauerbrook. Back for Davidson. Ertz. Last touch by Yamila Rodriguez. We're going to see some subs. Julia Ertz getting a breather. She played that straight full 90s. Jalen Howell will get her second appearance. And Megan Rapino, who we thought would get some 60 minutes tonight. That's what she gets. A little bit better. Sophia Smith will come in, and the U.S. are done now with their subs. So the U.S. has been able to get a lot of things done here tonight, besides scoring these goals. Rodriguez is coming out. Yael Oviedo will come in instead. Besides getting the goals, Ali, they're able to rest some players. They gave the players that they wanted to 45 minutes. They gave others 60, and now you're able to see a Jalen Howell get more minutes than she's had so far in her career and the same with Sophia Smith exactly right and you're getting to see versatility out of Sonnet sorry in the right back in, in the previous match now in the left back position versatility could be key when you narrow that roster down to 18 for the Olympics how many players can play more than one position so Rapino finished her night with a couple of goals. Strong performance for her. Overall strong performance for the U.S. Free kick there from Press. Headed away by Argentina. Press in a box. Driving it. And it's wide. Goal kick, Pereira. In the 64th minute, two goals by Rapino, one by Carly Lloyd, one by Christy Mewis. All in the first half. And like in any tournament, you hope to play well in your first game, even better in the second, even better in the third, and the U.S. can take certainly more out of this game than the other two. Ball played long for Smith. Young Smith will take it inside, lost it, got it back. Good dribbling skills, looks up, crossing, it's deflected. Mewis! Oh, she could have had her second goal. Could have, should have. Didn't see what happened with Becky Sauerbrunn, but there is always concern. When there was a collision, down. collision and air ball. And it was her and, and Howell actually coming together in the air. She appears to be okay, walking off under her own power. Had a smile in the end to say she's fine. <laughs> you can almost hear that conversation. Almost. 
Be a throw in here for the U.S. when play continues. We were talking, Ali, before about the U.S. improvement, and granted, Argentina is the weakest of the three teams that they're facing, but like you said, you can only play against who you're facing that night. So if they were not looking good and scoring four goals, there'd be criticism because it is against Argentina. Exactly right. And one of the things we were questioning coming in is that they cleaned up that final product. And the answer is yes, but it's still far from perfect. I mean, a lot more chances could be buried. That last one with Mewis is a, is a good example. Throw in far side for Midge Purse. Jalen Howell. Horan. Press. Shot or pass was deflected out either way. It's a corner for the U.S. Again, Kristen Press will take it. Sixty seventh minute. U.S. up four nothing over Argentina. Press will put it up. Pereira came out. Got a piece of it. Maybe a piece of a teammate. Should be another corner. Try it again from Kristen Press. Another one off the right foot. Herrera again. Spilled it. Smith blocked. It's still loose. Collected and sent back by Sonnet. This ball is deflected. Hymas was going to let it go. And now she does for the goal kick. out of the back trailing 4-0 they gave up four to Brazil in game one but that was a closer game than the scoreline indicated not the same tonight Ippolito oh, another giveaway for Argentina clipped ahead Tedder for Morgan Sash got it wide Stabile slowing it down Hymas U.S. are back on it. And Smith's attempt goes out. Goal kick. Millions of kids nationwide are without their normal access to sports and play due to COVID-19. That's why Fox Sports and Good Sports are restoring play for kids and the programs that serve them through donations of brand new sports equipment. Text PLAY to the number on your screen to help keep kids in the game. Sixty-ninth minute, Pereira sends it long. A battle for the ball with Smith. Ipolito wins it for Stabile. Ipolito moving it ahead, missed Oviedo with a pass. Ipolito back on it. Lost it to Howell. And another Argentina player is down. Play continues and now it is stopped. It is Hymas in that challenge. She's had a lot of work to do today. Pretty yeah, much alone up front. Exactly right. And they're asking her to come back so deep defensively. She's another one of those players that was on the World Cup team in 2019 used to play with Santos and Lyon. If you play for Lyon, you've got to have some ability. Here is Press with the keeper off her line, but that was too close to her. Morgan was the open player that it looked like Press was trying to get to. And Jaime is the only player in Argentinian women's football history who has won a Champions League that was with Lyon. Back 
and forth this one goes. It's finally settled. Christy Mewis push it back. Sourwood. Midge Purse. 71st minute. Four first half goals for the U.S. Put them in complete control of this. Two by Rapina, one by Lloyd, one by Christy Mewis. Last time these two clubs met was in 2014. Seven nothing win for the U.S. All seven goals were scored by Press and Lloyd. Four by Press, three for Lloyd. Press on the ball, leaving it. Horan. Switched by Davidson. Sauerbrunn in the circle. Purse from Howell. Right sideline. Sophia Smith. Nice footwork again. Finally, in the end, it was lost. And out, it belongs to Argentina. Smith is another one of those players that will be playing for the Portland Thorns of the NWSL. Former number one pick in 2020. Off Howell. And the whistle there. And the foul against Argentina with Morgan down. And then booking. And another high boot. Morgan's checking off that back line. Santana goes in. She gets the yellow. 73rd minute, free kick coming up here. Press will take it. Telling players to calm down a bit before this free kick is taken. 73rd minute. With the U.S. up by four. Press. Puts it up there. Not a down wide. It's Christy Mewis that was the closest one to it. And that's going to go out for a goal kick. If you would like to vote for the MVP, you can do that right now in U.S. Soccer on their Twitter feed. Those are the potential ones. Adriana Dibinha for Brazil, Rose Lavelle, USA, and Kristen Press for the USA. There was a five-person executive committee that developed the list, and they'll have a say in the vote, as well as you at home. Good list, huh? I wouldn't have yep. thought Adriana would be on that list coming into this tournament, but she had herself nice she believes cut. Yep. And I think that was a miss by Pia not to bring her on against the U.S. or starter. I think overall, Allie, that Brazil would have to be pretty pleased with what they did. I mean, not happy that they lost against the U.S., but gave a good account of themselves, and they closed out with the win over Canada, so they'll finish in second place. Interesting that how much they did test the U.S., and I'm talking to Vlaco about how they kept two, sometimes three players above the ball, and that did pose some problems for them. So when we talk about learning opportunities for this group and playing against top competition, you know, that was one wrinkle that the U.S. wasn't anticipating, and, and they had to adjust. What was it? He told us 70%. The transition moments from offense to defense went down by 70% in that second half with the adjustments that they yeah. made. It was a lot. They were forced into those adjustments, but that's what they wanted. They want to be challenged there. Up for Haran. And that's picked off. Delgado. Santana. Hymas. Delgado. All the way back. Sash for Delgado. Pressure there from Press. And now the ball is knocked out. Last touch by Jalen Howell. Plays at Florida State University. And another change is coming up. And she deserves a rest. Hymas is coming out. Replaced by Valentina Camara. And that's it. It's a sixth sub. 
Argentina on the ball. They'll consider this a pretty good second half if they don't concede again after conceding four goals in the first half of play. As the U.S. put it out of reach. Powell. Davidson. Sonic. Davidson looked to you tonight, Allie, pretty clean in terms of her touches, Tanner Davidson. Yeah, absolutely. I thought Tierna, I mean, again, not tested defensively, but one turnover I can recall. There's Purse on the right. Doubled up, knocked out, corner, USA. Just the sixth cap for Midge Purse or Margaret Purse, but she goes by Midge for the most part. Christy Mewis will take this corner. Mewis not only started tonight, she's going to get a full 90 in here. And without Ertz in there, the last corners have gone back post. We'll see if that holds true. Lewis ready, left footed, in swinger to the middle, and Humphrey Morgan couldn't bring it down cleanly with a goalkeeper out. And that's one thing we've seen out of Pereira, is she'll go fishing, and this ball is more driven across the top of the six. Pereira can't get a make a play on it. And it looks like it just wrong foots Alex Morgan. Little nick, perhaps, by Lindsey Aran throws the trajectory off. Oviedo lost it there. U.S. collects Christy Mewis, plays it safely back to Jane Campbell. Not much for Campbell to do tonight. Trying to become the number two goalkeeper to Alyssa Nair. You still have Ashlyn Harris, Casey Murphy, who's on this squad. In that group, Adriana French, who's battled injuries, still is always mentioned among goalkeepers. Sash will clear it. Sonnet back to Campbell, who makes her second start this year. She played in that second game against Columbia in January. And not tested there either. That's one of the challenges, you know, with limited games. How do you balance giving, if you're Vlaco, how do you balance giving listen airtime versus who potentially is going to be your number two? And do you put them in a more competitive match where they will be facing shots? Horan. We'll get it back on this left. It's headed towards the middle. Howell will play it back. Sauerbrunn. Purse. Jalen Howell. Pushing it to the right. And in the box, too close to Pareda with three U.S. players just outside the box. Eightieth minute, U.S. up 4-0. Pareda. Going to get that ball away. Among the crowd tonight, we're told 600 tickets made available by U.S. Soccer to frontline workers and their guests as a thank you. We're told that everyone attending there had both doses of the COVID-19 vaccine. They played so many games down here in Orlando, they wanted to reward those frontline workers. Six consecutive national team games here. Maybe more to come. Five played by the women, one by the men. We thank all of the frontline workers for what they've done during this pandemic. Absolutely. Nationwide. Worldwide. Here's Press. Sronet. Sauerbrunn pushing right. Back for Sonnet. Sonnet. 
Davidson slotting left. She can play left back, so it looks like right now that's what they've done with Sonnet shifting to the middle. At least for now. Sonnet. Wide for Davidson. There's a cross off that left foot. Missed one target, found another. Christy Mielis. Smith blocked. Mielis won it back. Purse. Christy Mielis. That was some pretty good passing in tight spaces. No real margin for error there. And that's one of those situations where I think they can bring it back out, recycle it. It's the patience part that they're trying to learn even more. And it's a David. good look at the far side of your screen. You can see how they just spy that attacking mid, the number 10 spot. Christine Mewis, someone's always on her. They're being marked. That's where you try to manipulate Argentina and drag them out of that space. Davidson is wide on this left side. That's where she played in her only World Cup appearance, when she had a couple of assists in that game against Chile. Pushed wide on the left side. Played across. Herrera spilled it. And now it's pushed over towards Lara Kent. And almost right on cue from UJP from Tierna Davidson with the initial go that the United States had in. Blanco talked about versatility. Well, Tierna Davidson has that. She was playing a six defensive mid for Stanford in college, now center back, outside back. So she does have capabilities there because look at the squad and you think, who's that backup for Julie Ertz if Julie Ertz, for whatever reason, can't go? Is it a Jalen Howell or is it a Tierna Davidson who can slide into that spot? All good questions that Vladko Andorovsky will have to answer at some point. Jokingly, he said the other day when someone asked him how many roster spots are open for the Olympics, he said 18. <laughs> and of course, it's it's not. That's the full roster. But he must be Ali at, what, 14 or 16? You would, you would guess. You would think he's close to that at this point, barring injury, of course. I think 16's aggressive. I do. Yeah. I, I so think 14. 14. Yeah. Fair. I do too, yeah. But there'll be tough decisions that have to be made for sure. Ball slotted through by Mayorga. Smith. Looking. Slotting it through. Morgan! And there it is for Alex Morgan. 5 nothing U.S. of Argentina getting forward and then the U.S. going in transition from that defense to offensive shape. They win the ball. It's Becky Sauerbrunn who steps up and when she wins it, that ball falls kindly at the feet of Sophia Smith and once she gets going and driving towards that central area, this is when angles start to shift and change and you can see she draws three defenders and that channel opens right up for Alex Morgan, who's just sitting between the two center backs and does so well just to shift her body shape. Now she's on the half turn, and she can go stride in when that ball is laid right in front of her. Center back Alex. can't get a touch on it, and the finish ensues. For Alex Morgan, a 108th international goal. She was tied with Michelle Akers for fifth place all time. She's now alone in fifth. Her 35th goal in her last 45 games. Christy Mewis off of her right foot, and that one goes wide. Five nothing U.S. Their first goal of the second half. See the history for the U.S. They've won every other year in the She Believes Cup. And they'll become the first to win it back to back. Set up by Morgan. Brought down. And the whistle. 
against the U.S. in the 86th minute. Thirty-one-year-old Alex Morgan scoring here in her home stadium. She plays, and she'll be playing again for the Orlando Pride after a short stint at Tottenham in 2020. Delgado clears. There's one in the air by Sonnet. Davidson over to Sonnet. Playing out of pressure. That was well done. She slips that ball ahead. Boy, did they break that pressure easily. Press towards the middle. Purse moving ahead. Right sideline. Smith trying to find Christy Mewis. Purse. Smith in. Off Morgan. Christy Mewis. Morgan to the turn. Alex Morgan is blocked. Should be another corner for the U.S. And you almost feel for Argentina. Look how many players they get below the ball. How many players they have in the 18 and still having difficulty just getting a touch on it. Let alone getting it outside of the 18. And there's the deflection that comes in at the end as Morgan tries to wrap around that and hit it far post. Team, and it's a simple tap in for her at the back post. Good finish. 60th international goal for Kristen Press and her 11th in her last 14 games. And I believe, Ali, that's the first time they've converted directly off of a corner kick in this tournament. I, I think you're right. Remember, they had 13 attempts in game one, and uncharacteristically for them, didn't come up with a single one there. Ball knocked out of play. And you do have to feel sorry for Argentina. The subs that they made were not for tactical reasons. They're gassed. Legs are very heavy. They've been in survival mode probably this second half against the number one ranked team in the world, the U.S. Of course, Argentina came in late. Japan was supposed to be in this tournament but could not participate due to COVID. And Argentina came in. Sonnet tackled away. Powell still fighting to try to win that ball. Paris. What was that? It's a free kick. <laughs> what was before that? Ninetieth minute. And Hippolito gets booked. Third yellow card on Argentina tonight and I think that's just a sign of frustration from Argentina two players tackling Mitch Purse really ball played in and Morgan just put it too high Almost ended this game with an exclamation point. And real quality on the service. From Kristen Press, you can see it. The U.S. just bunches up at the top of the 18. If you can, you run your player into someone else. Alex Morgan gets free. That was it. 
Final whistle while we are away on replay. U.S. with an easy victory tonight. They can repeat it with a couple of goals. Lloyd, Christy Mewis, Morgan, and Press all scoring in a 6-0 win. They easily win the She Believes Cup trophy. All they needed tonight was a draw, and they got a lot more than that. Allie, your takeaway. I think the U.S. performed the way we anticipated, and that was coming up against an Argentinian team that they were likely going to pin in and sit back voluntarily. But I was impressed with the fluidity in which how the United States did it in that first half, the rotations they used, the timing of those rotations, and the tactical understanding of what spaces not to get into, or the simple decision-making of staying in one spot and not going into collapse an area that that you're going to exploit. I thought the U.S. looked strong in that first half. I think with the substitutions coming in, the fluidity suffered a bit. But in the end, this is about evaluation of players, really, for Vlako Anonofsky and players like Alex Morgan. Strong performances. I think some of the players that got their stock starts, Casey Kruger, had a really good night. Tierna Davidson not tested, but looked comfortable alongside Becky Sauerbrunn. Christy Mewis, what can you say? I mean, came in, had a big goal, yeah. good assist. I think it bode well for a lot of the individuals that are looking to make a, a case for themselves. We are going to get to speak with Megan Rapino. She appears to be headed our way. She got two goals tonight. The first two goals that really put this game out of reach. There was no way Argentina was going to come back even that early in the game after 26 minutes when the U.S. was looking like they were on the front foot all night. Then they got a goal from Lloyd and then one more before the first half ended to really put this game out of reach. So do we have Megan? Megan, thank you for joining us. How are you tonight? I'm good. How are you guys doing? Good. You saved the best for last. Describe your game tonight and your teammates in game three. Um, it was good. I mean, we wanted to, to come out fast, as always. Um, it's always dangerous to leave uh, leave teams hanging around, so we definitely didn't do that today. Um, just tried to find the space, be aggressive. Uh, found myself in the in the middle a little bit more. The nines better be careful leaving me leave me up there scoring goals, but uh, just, try, just try to get up there and uh, take the chances. Well, three goals tonight, Megan, or three goals in this tournament, excuse me, and I want to say I paid just one of the players to watch the tournament, so thank you for coming through for me. But more importantly, want to know about your celebration the other day. What was uh, so special I about mean, it? Uh, well, I mean, obviously, Ash and Allie uh, aren't here. Uh, they've just welcomed uh, the birth of their baby girl Sloan so I just had to give them a little shout out um, we you know they live in Orlando and we haven't been able to see them obviously because of COVID and everything um, so it's kind of a bummer for everyone not to be able to see the new baby uh, so just give a just give a little love to the new one uh, we can't wait to meet her obviously having kids around the team again um, you know with Charlie here um, is amazing we haven't had uh, you know really little ones around the team in a long time so we're all super excited and just so happy for them you got to give us a heads up next time so we know what's coming with yeah. that celebration. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I got I to keep you guys on your toes. Yeah. <laughs> Megan, you're looking good after a year of rest, as you said, right? Let your body heal. Now what's next for you because the NWSL season is fast approaching? Yeah. I'm really excited to get back in the NWSL. Obviously, um, you know, I, I, I took all the time <laughs> that I could possibly take last year, but um, I think it really did do me well. Um, you know, I, I think the NWSL and all the teams and players have done incredible jobs with the protocols and keeping everybody safe. So looking forward to get back, getting back with the team. As far as we know, the Olympics is happening. So um, preseason will be good for us. Uh, a couple games coming up in April and then uh, really looking to start the season so we can get that consistent play. I think that's the, the next thing that I am really looking forward to is just those consistent games and a consistent training environment for us all to play in. Thank you for joining us tonight. Congrats on your game and winning the trophy again. Congrats, Megan. Thank you. See you guys. It's Megan Rapino who scored the first two goals of this game. The U.S. dominated. Sure, they're going to celebrate. It's a 6 nothing win over Argentina. It's another trophy. We'll come back with more. Well, as expected tonight, Ali, the U.S. rolled over Argentina. It was 6 nothing. It was tight for the first 15 minutes or so, but once the U.S. scored that first goal, everything opened up for the U.S. Yeah, and you could just see the fatigue set in from Argentina. They really defended 
both and now first games in the she US believes cup and then coming into this game and that takes a lot out of you it takes a lot out of your legs and i think you could see that start to wear on them as the half rolled on but us credit to them and and the way that they were able to dismantle argentina Trophy this time. year's Visa She Believes Cup MVP the is most valuable player. 16, it is Rose, Rose Lavelle. Lavelle. Rose Lavelle was definitely the difference in that Canada game when she came in as a sub and scored that game winner. Had a solid game against Brazil as well. <laughs> part of that was executive committee vote. Part of that was the fans voted. She didn't look all that comfortable getting it, did I she? Love, I love how awkward she gets with that she, I, I think she's so humble that she's thinking, how did I, how did I get that, right? Yes, I, I, probably a lot of other players might say the same thing because they weren't expecting it. But there were several good candidates, and some of them weren't even in the on the finalists in the ballot that we saw. That's really true. So, first place medals going to the USA players. Well-deserved. We mentioned this during the show earlier, Ali. This is the way you want a tournament to go, right? You start off doing what you think is okay or well in game one. You certainly don't want to peak in game one. Second game, you want to be better. And the third game, even better. Where do you think they improve the most besides the obvious goal scoring in this tournament? <laughs> You know, I or, think or is that it? <laughs> no, I, I think I would say yes, that is it. It's the final piece was much better from the first game to the last. But I think decision making and, and that final execution combined. It's not just the, the service. I think it was knowing when to go and when not to and which player to pick out and what space. You know, but I, I think, again, we have to consider that it was Argentina and that is an easier opponent for them, so it does Number make 10, things look rosier, Arnie and it does things make Lloyd. things look a little more fluid. But you can only play against who is out there, and I think the United States put in a good shift tonight. Program reminder, right about now, you should be watching Xavier Providence here on FS1, but it will start on FS2 while we continue on here with the She Believes Cup trophy presentation. Later, Xavier Providence will move back to FS1 when we are done here. So, Sonnet played at least three different positions during this She Believes Cup tournament. There's Megan Rapino, who scored a couple of goals, and we thank her for joining us on that post-game interview. She's back. And there is your MVP, Rose LaBelle. And I am surprised at LaBelle actually getting the MVP award. Mm. She did have that goal against Canada, but for the most part, we didn't see a ton of her tonight. You know, the right side was really bright in the first half for Argentina. She was in that right attacking mid spot, so you can give a lot of credit to her for the rotations and the fluidity, but I think for the most part, yeah, a little bit of an understated tournament for Lavelle. Crystal Dunn's another one of those players that got a well-deserved rest tonight. She and Dahl Camper, a lot of minutes. None tonight for them. Horan was a second-half sub. But they got to use everybody except for the third goalkeeper in Casey Murphy. So from that standpoint, Allie, you would think that's a plus. Smith came in and played a couple of games. Christy Mewis gets a start, scores a goal, plays a full 90 tonight. So a lot of players got opportunities during this tournament. And he, Lachlanowski, told us that Casey Murphy looked good in camp as well. So that is a strong statement from the U.S. And overall, you just wonder what information was he able to glean from tonight's performance. Well, decisions were always going to be tough. Now they might be even tougher Position for Vlatko and Danofsky. Back-to-back -back champions Lundberg. waiting for the official awarding of the trophy. England and France are the only other two nations that have won this. Otherwise, the U.S. has owned this tournament. Coaches getting their medals too, Alec. Unlike the Olympics, in which they don't. Sixteen zero and zero for that man, Vladko Andonovsky. Yet to taste defeat. There have been some close games. Tonight was not one of them. Neither the captain. Becky Sauerbaum will get her medal and get to lift this. Ladies and gentlemen, your 2021 
She Believes Cup champions, the United States! Champions yet again, back-to-back -back titles. They have been consistently strong in the tournament that they created, the She Believes Cup. Two goals by Megan Rapinoe, one by Lloyd, one by Christy Mewis, one by Alex Morgan, and one by Kristen Press. For Ali Wagner and our entire crew, I'm J.P. Della Camera. Thanks for watching tonight. Thanks for watching in record numbers during this entire tournament as the USA are champs again with a 6-0 win over Argentina.